everybody. Nice to see you. And uh, yeah, I am going to be enjoying the fruits of my labors. <laughs> I did a really fun thing on Saturday. And that was like I took the whole day to write songs uh, with the goal being 20 songs, but didn't quite get there. Still. Got about 11, uh, and a lot of them, if they're not full songs, they have like a verse and a chorus and could go somewhere, so that's exciting, and uh, yeah, so I'm pretty pumped about it. This is one uh, called All, All Things Connect, big surprise, uh, I really, I think it's really cool. Anyway, um, here, let me get the chat up and going. Why don't I see the chat? I'm, I tried, I'm always learning things with, um, with the streaming, with the restream. So I want to, I, today was the first day I tried to like set up an event. So um, it's a little different uh, than, different looking than how, than how I'm used to it. So please, I can't find the chat. <laughs> uh, why can't I find the chat? That'd be real cool. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nope, still no, no chat. Wow, okay. Uh, we'll tell you what, if you chat, uh, I will see it on, on the YouTubes. I'll do my best to respond, but it's not my usual chat box. Anyway, um, so yes, what is this 20, 20 song game you may ask? And it's based on this book, the frustrated songwriters handbook, which I can relate. Um, and I haven't I haven't read it. It actually came in the mail after doing the 20 song game, but basically the point isn't to make 20 songs. The point is to like bust through your internal blocks and dialogue about wow, you couldn't possibly write 20 songs in one day and just like doing going for it anyway. If you give yourself like 20 minutes per song ish, um then and just keep on moving it just like keeps the pipes clear so anyway uh i wanted to talk about the songs that i did come up with and what the process was like for me and what helped what didn't really help what got me stuck and how and if i got unstuck from any of that so uh yeah this this first one is called All Things Connect, and uh, it wasn't, I'm playing them in alphabetical order, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> or whatever order they pop up on my um, last work on. But this came somewhere in the be beginning, middle of the day, probably the beginning of the day. Um, and we didn't have that many constraints. Hi, Andre, how are you? Nice to see you in the chat. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm a little awkward with the chat at the moment, trying to, trying to figure it out. Um, but yes, exciting, exciting to, to have, uh, this like challenge of writing 20 songs and getting to 11. <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's all right. That was 11 more songs than I'd had. Uh, so yeah, uh, this one, had a lot of fun with a couple of di and so I started with a template um I've been like working on this kind of like lo-fi template halfway through the day I switched the the beat 
um, the kit that I had on Citala just to an 808 kit. I can't remember. I don't, I can't remember. I think this is the 808 kit and it sounds pretty dope. So I'm going to play it again because they're all short, like TikTok worthy songs. And uh, it's really pretty cool. All things connect. All things connect. All things connect. you can play a 20 20 song game without doing any production at all uh, like in the book he talks about how you could do it with like a hand tape recorder and a kazoo and that'd be fine uh it's <laughs> just this is what i felt comfortable doing some composing on and i'd been already doing like beats in bulk a couple of live streams ago we did that together and uh, so I thought, oh, well, maybe this can kind of be like an extension of that. And it had been a while since I wrote words. So I don't know. Maybe these are trite, but I, some of them are cool. And I like how this one turned out. I feel like it's worthy of being worked on again. Uh, this uh, piano sound I love. And it was one. Um, let's look at this because it's just... It was so cool. So first of all, it's this, this Sforzando uh, plug with, a few, I believe it's like the Versalis, Versalis upright, which is a free upright piano sound. I have some tweaks on it to make it sound a little bit more lo-fi. And then I had, um, I remember Super Rabbit told me about the, um, not the sequence, not the step sequencer, but the R arpeggiator the arpeggiator and so I have been playing with that and oh my god it's so fun <laughs> so uh yeah I I wanted to show that I'm still not used to it and so like right like right now I can't even find where um how to get to it <laughs> Um, oh my God, this is embarrassing. So, yes, let's, uh, upright pant, is it in the MIDI section? It's like a MIDI, um, effect that it, and each channel comes with it. Wow. Andre, help me. <laughs> Where? Where's the arpeggiator? Uh, audio, audio clip effects? No. Groove clip, no. Properties, no. Oh, man. I had such a good time using this, too. It was so cool. So, and I, it was, I just hit, like, a couple of notes, really, and it did this beautiful thing. thing. Midi tab. Thank you, Andre. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> so, yes. Awesome. Uh, so, I... I put this arpeggiator on right here so for everybody who uh, watched me fumble through that yes you get to the arpeggiator through the um this little display to the left and then the midi tab awesome yay <laughs> but it just there's such cool and i just put it to three octaves one sixteenth uh 16th notes and this arabesque pattern preset pattern which is so fun 
So I and I ended up using that uh, effect in a couple of different. But how cool! It just gives it this like rolling cool feel. And when I um, when I bounced it, it bounced the because um, it was this this was just like one MIDI note, one MIDI note, one MIDI note. But then I bounced it out, and now it's it uh, it is it sequenced itself. It sequenced itself. <laughs> Not articulate today. Oh my god! Hi, how are you? Uh, so this was that was a really fun technique that I was that I was playing with in this time crunch as just a, a, a great way to um, be creative and get a cool sound. Some of the other things that I did that I often do is I use my like silent kick um, method for creative side chaining so that I could side chain whatever I wanted regardless of what the actual kick was doing. I have a video about that. Um, but I use that a l like on a almost every track you'll see. And then I have the my creepy piano vinyl layer just to make things like extra crispy lo-fi. Uh, yeah, so that was that was really nice. This main instrument sound. Oh, I used that's interesting. So this sound, the bell icicle sound. Oh, here, let me take this off the solo. Um, I used a single notes in another song, but it sounds really good as chords. So I really enjoyed that. And this is vital synth. My my love. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just had fun. And oh, and these chord changes. One of the biggest helps to this was a um, piece of software called, uh, online software called Chord Chord, chordchord.com. And it makes, it makes, uh, chord progressions for you and you can tell it what to do and they're they're so, it's so fun it's just it's kind of random and you can tweak them uh, and then you can export the MIDI and just drag it into the DAW so uh, I got a seven day free trial of this because I'd used it before there was a free version I, I don't know if there is anymore just but I don't know. I think I'm going to pay the monies and get it because it helped me work so fast. So, so, so fast and not overcomplicate things, which I tend to do. And I tend that was that was a major block with this project of writing so many songs is thinking like, oh, well, I'm not I'm not good at coming up with chords and like I don't know any music theory and like or the, all the music I theory I used to know is like flown out of my head from disuse <laughs> and uh, yeah something like this it's it's not cheating it's inspiration and I you you'll see all some really really cool things that I did with the uh, various things that I the chord changes I got from chord chord so this is the song all things connect one of eleven <laughs> Uh, and yeah I think I do want to work on it a little bit and maybe release it later uh, so this one and what I'm showing you I haven't worked on since Saturday I was tempted to be like oh I should like tune I should melodyne this before I go on air and stuff but like no I want to show you that this was what I was able to do within the allotted time without any post-production so it was just like do one move on do one move on do one move on um yeah chord chord costs uh there's different tiers i think i'm going to be getting the lowest one which is about 100 bucks a year um which i don't know if i'm able to make 100 songs with it that feels worth it <laughs> and i feel like i could easily make 100 songs with it easily so uh yeah i also i have arcade i don't I never use Arcade, and I don't think it's my fault that I don't use it. I feel like it's an overwhelming design, and 
It doesn't work for my particular style at this time, even though it is very cool. It is very cool. One could just like do all of their production only using arcade, but I don't know. I, it just doesn't seem to be my style at this point. But yeah, about hundred bucks US. Uh, but there are different tiers. So anyway, this is another song. I think I did this one pretty early in the day. Oh, and how it worked was we checked in in the morning with some ideas of like what tools we were going to be using. Like I talked about uh, to the other two people who were Brianna Sorkin, who's an amazing composer, and to Little Spiral, who you may know from uh, from us working together on my channel on a song together. That was really fun. A anyway, she's an amazing writer as well. And so us three were working on this. So we checked in in the morning and talked about, I talked about how I wanted to use uh, ob Oblique Strategies, which was um, Brian Eno and Peter Schmitz project to here let me pull that up um to sort of shake up your thinking so it just gives you like these weird little prompts like feed the recording back out of the medium okay uh and then blank white card. okay <laughs> so any of these could be inspiration use fewer notes yeah and this is really really a, a great um it was it was very inspirational. So a couple of the songs came came out of the oblique strategies. And this is a free thing. It used to be physical cards and there's like probably still physical cards floating around somewhere, but they're out of print and they're all online now. So um, I I included this link and the link to Chord Chord in the description of this video, I believe. So if you wanted to check them out, the, these were my, my not so secret weapons for for creating a whole bunch of songs in in one day all right so this song again it's not tuned this is what it was when it came out of uh into the world <laughs> so it's called uh one last time and yeah so I'll, I'll play it and then i'll talk about it a little bit how i made it one last time self-conscious about the mic that I had been using. I was using um, this B2 Pro, which is a really amazing mic. Uh, and I thought it sounded like it was just picking up way too much of everything. So I tried using just like a dynamic mic on this, the SM58. Uh, that's really what this is. And you can tell that it just doesn't sound as alive. It doesn't sound as sparkly. Um, and that has a lot to do with the mic choice. I thought that it would like pick up less room noise in my new space here. I don't have as much quiet as I did in my other space, but um, so I was thinking, oh, it's, this is this mic is picking up everything, everything. But really, with a good condenser like the B2 Pro, it picks up all of the sparkly frequencies that make something sound alive and that can sound really kind of odd or even a little bit bad when it's 
listen to by itself. But when it's in the mix, it is so nice. And this was also before I put on a denoiser. I have like a basic tuner on it that I put on, the Waves um, tuner, so that it could be somewhat in tune. Uh, but I didn't take the time to go through in Melodyne like I usually would with a... Um, with any vocal performance, no matter how good it is, no matter how good it is, like we're just, our ears are used to hearing ultra tuned vocals. So I didn't, <clears throat> I did not take the time to do that. So, uh, but I do like the groove of this one and the lyrics are, it could, could go somewhere. They could go somewhere. I'm pretty, um, I think that they're kind of, it's kind of a catchy hook, if not, uh, cliche so uh that's all right i'm not i'm just gonna like you know i'm steamrolling over the self-criticism because it's not it's not what's important here uh, but i do really like this groove and uh the main groove on this one so these chords i put through the electric piano that comes with cakewalk it's really nice sounding electric piano um just by itself a lot with a lot of uh tremolo on it it's luscious yummy one last time and the <laughs> this is mellotron and it is the backward joan setting which i think is one of my favorite settings this instrument is so wonderful it's so wonderful and it's free <laughs> I just, I love it a lot. Uh, and I used it on nearly every track that I did. Um, so here I have, it's being um, side chained with this silent kick. And it just gives it a really cool effect. Uh, yeah, it sounds One last awesome. Time. Last time. <laughs> I took those same chords, but just like uh, edited them. It's made, uh, made it just a little bit more spacious by the water tower we drew the sunset in and color my drum pattern hadn't happened yet you can see oh, oh it was, it was already showing it there we go yeah this nice little, little low if i had the doing the velocity um, gives it more liveliness the future changing up the velocities in the step sequencer Step sequencer is really wonderful. I so when I find it super super inspiring. Like I know, drum programming drums was one of the most mystifying thing, and it still can be. Like I feel like <laughs> sometimes I feel like, uh, am I like cheating to use Sitala and the drum sequencer, like the step sequencer and Cakewalk, because it feels <laughs> too easy and it's like really fun uh, and the answer is no I'm not cheating when things feel easy and fun I think that um, I'm on to something so I've really embraced that way of doing beats in in my tunes and uh, yeah this was a great experience to just make cool, a bunch of cool beats like most of these I started with um, the chord progression number one and a sound that I liked and then I'd like build the beat under that I don't think I built any of these like beat first some I yeah I don't think I built any of them beat first yeah anyway so that's one last time <laughs> we'll close that And let's see, um, connect the dots. I think this was actually the first one that I did for the day. And one of the oblique strategies prompts was something about connecting the dots. I don't remember exactly what it was, but yeah. Thank you, Andre. Yes, electronic music needs electronic sounding drums. It's not cheating. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> And plus that whole thing of like, that's cheating is part of that's vanity, part of the, like pride, 
uh, of like, I want to do it all myself, me, me, me. And I want people to see how amazing I am. That's part of it. It is when I find something that's like easy. And it's also my aversion to using other people's loops in my finished products. Um, even though like there's no thing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, but if they're cleared, you know, if they're cleared for use, then loops are awesome. Uh, so uh, getting over that hurdle also was helpful with this process of just just keep writing. It doesn't matter what what you're using to write. Just write something that didn't exist before. <laughs> so now we'll listen to Connect the Dots. If you connect the dots, see the whole of what you're doing, you'd be feeling better. sweet sentiment uh, yeah I, I wanted to start off a lot of these songs ended up being very encouraging because I felt like that was the only way to combat the gremlins of self-doubt that would have just uh, gr ground me to a halt if I had actually um, stopped to listen to them again that's this is that oh, electric poi poiano <laughs> pioano <laughs> that it's the beautiful cakewalk um electric piano sound so this one was super simple and um yeah this was the first this was the first one so you can see like my i did have something else that helped me was that i set up all my my guitars and i was like i tuned my guitars ahead of time and the amplifier that i like to to have i set that up to be mic'd set up all my mics I did a test before the like start time that helped a lot so it, it just removed the excuse of having to fuss with my tuning as a as a way of not creating um or fuss with anything same same goes for having the template like when I had the template I could just like well these are the instruments I have I'm just going to use these and we'll go rather than spending en countless minutes uh wasting them on like oh finding just the right sound and just the right thing and yeah, so being prepared ahead of time really helped move it along too. Oh dear, we have a we have a, a special robot in in the chat. Okay, we're gonna just remove that and report. Okay, you great. uh yeah and andre like it's i i don't think i don't think it's cheat i i see now that you said that it's cheating when i spend a long time working on mini drums that i want everyone to believe are real i disagree i think that uh it's all it's all good effort it's all honest effort if if it sounds good in the end if it's and if it's satisfying to you so uh I think that this whole attitude of, oh, that's cheating and when it comes to musical things or any artistic endeavor, it's something to be examined because there's a lot of ego behind that and something stopping me from just 
making something and putting putting it something new into the world so all right that one was connect the dots for an encouraging little number that i feel like i could speed up twice the speed and uh tune <laughs> it could be sweet it could be sweet <laughs> yeah and again these are not things that I have tuned um, or spent much post post production on no produ post production this is all this is all just the heat of the moment all right here's one cup did it actually come on open up there we go there's one called now you're healing and again this is another kind of um encouraging encouraging message this is one where i i think i finally decided to put the denoiser on because i was just getting a lot of kind of um uh noise floor with my vocal vocal takes and i wanted to have it just be a little little cleaner sounding from the get-go little tricks like that can help with reducing the time of post-production too where it's like i got i'm getting the best recording that i can with the space that i have with the mic that i have um but it did just need a little help from a plug-in to get cleaned up with this um blue labs denoiser which has been a really wonderful tool and i'm i'm sorry that i was one of the vultures that only learned about blue labs when they were uh going belly up basically and giving all their plugins away for free but this one has been amazing so all right let's have a listen to now you're healing and this is one i want to develop i think because it's i like the message Oh, let me turn. Hold, hold on. I don't need that. We don't. We don't need the metronome right now. What matters the most is you're still breathing. What matters the most is you're still here. It's not your fault You came through it all in one piece Break and we fail But now you're healing Now you're this time but I'm, i really like it i feel like it's very like got a very katie perry uh very katie perry vibe to it uh and it's very encouraging so i might work on that one more um yeah uh i liked adding this little weird little shaker thing here uh which it's stretched into the kind of an interesting like polyrhythm sort of thing uh, so that turned that 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 can be a cool thing that happens when you make a loop out of something uh, that maybe wasn't in the right um, in the same time signature or uh, in the same tempo I mean or or sent time signature for that matter so uh, that turned out really cool uh, did I do anything else special on this one? Uh, this was, I think, Joan on the, Joan on, backward Joan again. I just love this, this pad is so pretty. It's so pretty. And it sounds super cool when it's side chained like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I do, I do think I want to put some more work into it. 
I don't I don't know if you're um referring to this one, Andre, or the one before, but yeah, I this one I, I like a lot and I think it's really sweet. And uh another it was this was another one where I used the where is it? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh no. It wasn't I thought I used the the um arpeggiator. The arpeggiator. But no, I this was part of the sound. This is such a cool sound. It's a, another vital. It's like a sequence in vital. Incredible. So cool. I just find that super impressive that you can make such complicated sequences. Anyway, so yeah, that's a sweet one. And I will probably be working on it some more. All right, moving on. And yeah, this is something, the 20 song game is something that uh, Brianna and Little Spiral and I want to do quarterly. So um, I hope this is interesting for you to see. <laughs> How I was like, maybe I'll even try to um, live stream the next one. That might be a really interesting dynamic. Um, might be very cool. This is, oh, let's see. Um, we listen to all of those. We'll listen to Anyway I'm Down. This was the last one that I did for the day. Um, it doesn't have words, it's just a groove, but it's, it's something that I could develop. And it is an asset now. Kind of thing, well, it's not quite an asset. It's like a potential asset. I'm starting to think of my songs in terms of assets now um, when they're when they're finished and, and rather than being like just like let them out into the wild it's sort of like letting a letting a pet bunny out into the wild like yeah maybe it'll survive but I probably need to <laughs> mind it <laughs> not just release it into the wild like that <laughs> Anyway, here we go. It probably doesn't even need words. Maybe Allo Recliner will develop it out and we'll we'll make it a little slower and went into our one of our like low five beats. Might be really good. Okay, so I'm gonna close that one. And let's see. Um mm. Twenty song game. Okay. This is another early one where it was like, yep, all right, these are lyrics are kind of trite. Let's just clear the pipes. I think um, Ed Sheeran talks about what in songwriting, you got to clear the pipes. Just like get the muddy water out of the pipes <laughs> so that you can get the good stuff. <laughs> I feel like this song's really cheesy, but. Um, it's okay. It's okay. It's got sort of like a, a retro vibe to it, kind of like Bruce Springsteen. Well, I'll 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 let you decide. <laughs> it's, but you know, I'm just being honest with my work here. Uh, that I, w I wasn't doing a whole lot of editing. Honestly, there was still editing happening in my head, and that is why I didn't get to 20 songs and why I only got to 11 is because the inner editor was going crazy. Like, Oh my God, what are you doing? You crazy woman. Don't, 
don't put these into the world <laughs> at all. Hide them away until you have them properly tuned and timed and written and rewritten. So anyway. There's another cheek to turn. Rebuild another bridge that burned. Another pair of shoes to walk a mile in. Another day to start again. Lend a hand to a friend. My chance to reach out. These are loops. That I'm turning in. Help me help. I did not play that guitar. Help me I did write that little ha ha loop though. Which is cool. When you don't know what to do. <laughs> one of the only fade outs I've made in my life <laughs> but anyway uh all right yeah so this is a, a point where the my internet had stopped working and I was like oh no I can't use cord cord and I can't use oblique strategies what am I gonna do so I went into my own my my sample library that I had on my computer um pulled some some loops to get some inspiration from and put those together so they sound a little cheesy. That's okay. It's okay. Um, where did this come from? Uh, these these loops came from uh, I can't remember right now, but it's a site recommended by Acid Pro to where you should get your loops. Wow, I can't remember. Anyway, they're not bad loops and the, the collections that they have on that website are good i cannot remember <laughs> i'm sorry that's useless information moving on <laughs> i was gonna say it's something like like producer mix <laughs> something anyway hey jamie fonte how are you nice to see you nice to see you in the chat you have a question okay uh, i say my computer is relatively slow because it is it it is an i7, it is 17, it is n17. If I use buses, does that tend to use less CPU? Yes, than using them on the actual track. Absolutely, yes. Uh, when when you have the your effects done on buses and doing them as sends, it is much uh, easier for your computer to handle that because there's really only there's one instance of this piece of software that's whirring away um whizzing away working for you and you get to send it to the different tracks so it is definitely lighter on your cpu usage yes even if you have a whole pile of buses <laughs> which i often do um but yeah if it's still if it's still slow like look at how many effects you're actually using sometimes so often i create from templates where i have the effects that i've liked in the past and but I may not be using, when I get into the project, I may not be using, like, for example, I may not use a certain delay at all. Um, so I, I can eventually, like, delete those buses, that, those effects buses that don't serve. So, but yes, doing, I, I have a video about that, uh, a short video on the, fl the fleet method. It's, it's parallel processing using buses. <coughs> But it, yeah, uh, good question. So glad I could be helpful. I feel like I often get more, way more advice than I give. <laughs> like especially Andre's here; he's always helping me out uh, when I'm doing these live streams. <laughs> and like Super Rat Rabbit, um, Eric has has been really helpful too. I mean, it's a nice community that way, and that there's just a lot of experienced people who use Cakewalk and uh, willing to help those with less experience in a really uh, like non-competitive way. Mm. Yeah, that's it. There's like not a com com competitiveness that I see with other sort of communities of DAW users. Anyway, okay, what else should I play for you? Oh, I have a really cute one that I like a lot called Same Old Selves. I do want to develop this one. It's really sweet. I wrote this one for my husband. <laughs> uh, 
I wrote a lot of these for him, actually, uh, especially the lullaby I'll play for you later. But yeah. Oh, yes. Jamie, definitely listen to Andre. Uh, if you freeze the VST instruments, there remains only an audio track that needs nearly no CPU power. That's a really good point. I don't do that nearly enough unless I'm using some kind of squirrely VST that has like a lot of randomization elements that I just need to like nail down. <laughs> but I should probably do it a lot more than I do. Yes, freezing things. And to freeze something, you see this um, asterisk icon, freeze synth. What that does is it makes the MIDI information and the effects that you have on it um, frozen into audio for you to do whatever you want with. So that's really, really great, great tip for saving CPU. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to write this down like tips. <laughs> Freeze. And then bus processing. Um, anything else for how to save on your CPU? I mean, just being thoughtful about your ranging too. Of do you need? Oh, one thing that um, because contact is a is a pain in the ass, huge instrument that like if you're not used to, like me, I'm not used to it at all. Like you don't ever see me using it on my live streams because I need to spend some dedicated time to learn it. Um, but some people, especially new people who are uh, learning, will put several instances of contact on, and that is a that is a bear for your CPU. The contact is an enormous, enormous um, CPU suck, and it's better to have one instance of it that's routed in such a way that you have individual control over each sound, rather than having one um, multiple instances. I would love to figure out how to do that with um, BBC, Spitfire BBC Orchestra, now that I think about it. Even though I haven't had, I've had a lot of tracks of BBC instances and it hasn't slowed me down too much, but it would be cool to know. I bet there's a way to do it. I mean, I feel like Spitfire must have that kind of capability where I can route it out separately based on the sections of the orchestra. Anyway, lots to learn, so much to learn, which is why it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful journey. And there's ways to do a ton of awesome stuff without learning that too. <laughs> so there's always just many ways to pet a cat. Uh, okay, so this one is called Same Old Self. Let's do something boring together Sit on the couch in this crappy weather Let's do something we usually do Fall into routines that we're used to We don't need to be anyone different We don't need to make every day sparkle develop that one because I like the idea you know so many songs talk about how like you gotta seize the moment you only you only have one life and nothing good comes out of a comfort zone but I beg to differ <laughs> I think it's really important to have those times where you just do something boring but you don't have to be alone like you could, so let's do something boring together and <laughs> that's enough but yeah, again, I was rocking the this Mellotron. I this 
wood made tapes setting uh, with the side chaining. I just kept, so I, I put the side chain on the Mellotron and just like kept it on for all these songs because it just sounds so cool. So cool. Makes a great intro. There's something about the Mellotron that's just like so intimate and warm and weird. <laughs> I love that. Intimate, warm, and weird? Like, yes, <laughs> that's what I want for my life. <laughs> Not just my music. Let's do something we usually do. Fall into routines that we're used to. We don't need to be anyone different. We don't need yeah, to I didn't have the denoiser on this. It's enough. I like this song so much, I want to put the denoiser on it right now. <clears throat> so, uh, just to show you how to use the denoiser de if you have it. Um, pick a little section that is just like n nothing in it and loop it with it on solo so you can hear what's happening. And then I'm gonna add the denoiser. The denoiser is one of those effects where you, <laughs> it would not really help it that much to put it on a bus. I have. Uh, especially if I'm recording in the same scenario with the same mic, then like they probably all, all could use this denoiser. Um, but this is one where I tend to do on individual tracks. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Stumbling through this process together. Uh, I'm really glad. Oh, I have my head of the curve enough to seriously help out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love Mike too. Mike, I, I learned so, so, so much from Mike, um, and continue to, I haven't watched his channel in a while, but like he recently did one about creative gating that I need to get, I need to dig into that because I did a video on gates. So maybe before you watch his video on creative gating, watch my video on gate, like what is a gate anyway? <laughs> Once I realized, like, oh, it's one of those things where it's like you have to be this tall to ride this ride. This sound has to be this big of a waveform to pass through. Anyway, um, yeah. Well, good. I'm I'm really glad that it can be it can be helpful. Yep. And st stumbly though I am. So anyway, to how to use this? I'm gonna play. So it's just noise happening. I'm gonna tell it to learn learn the noise. It's mostly a rumble it's gonna take out okay so then when I hit that it takes it out entirely and I can't even like raise the threshold on it so it really cleans up the sound so now it shouldn't we don't need to be anyone different oh right right Take we the loop don't off. need to be anyone different. I think I have we a. I did put a gate or a gate on this. Mm. I should try it without the gate. We don't need to be anyone different. Then you really hear the noise floor. Yeah. Okay. Let me turn this gate off. Let's do that again. Because the signal flows like through the pre-channel first. It goes pre-channel like down and then it goes to these effects so pre-channel first and then whatever effect i put on it so what was happening is that denoiser was happening after the gate so the gate was taking care of most of the silence and making it truly silent except for that rumble um but now that i've taken the gate off let's just use the denoiser and have it learn that So, let me play this again. We don't need to be anyone different. Okay, I'm just gonna, there we go. That's what I wanted to learn. There we go. There we go. Sam Junior Music, hi! Sam, how are you? How's your music going? I haven't, I feel like I haven't seen you in a minute. Um, oh wait, I need to do this for properly. I got excited to see you in the chat. Hi. <laughs> Sam makes really cool music. Uh, it's kind of like John Mellencamp. Um, yeah, it's really neat stuff. So, 
Okay, and then I can raise that threshold a little bit more, just a touch, and then it should take care of it all. We don't need to make it. So, now it sounds a should sound just a lot cleaner. We don't need to be anyone different. Oh yeah, and totally a low cut. I mean, here I am doing production stuff. I said I wouldn't, but here I am. I really like this song, and so let's do it. Let's absolutely get, let's cut that low. Let's get that rumble out. Bye. Might, might as well. We don't need to be anyone different. Keep myself a little bit. We don't need to make every day sparkle. It's enough to have coffee and chat. It's enough. It's enough. We can be our same old self. You're absolutely right, Andre. Like a low cut before and then the gate. Um, yeah. But for this, the nice thing about this denoiser is that it just deals with all that. It deals with all that. Um, this little gator, by the way, is a free thing that comes with Cakewalk. It's one of the one knob wonders. What do they call it? Uh, style dial. Uh, so, and it works pretty good. It works pretty good, especially for, like, I was doing this kind of, like, quick and dirty uh, style of recording, and something like a, a single knob, I didn't want to mess with very many settings at this point in the in the process. I just wanted to, like, write, 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 compose, 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 and not be bogged down by um, too much mixing at this point. But yeah, absolutely. There's so there's loads of things I can do to make the song sound way better, and you know, including just redoing the vocals altogether. Uh, but yeah, so, yeah. Um, anyway, the song is is sweet, and I guess I am gonna save that then. But yeah, we don't need to ode, ode to being boring and comfortable with somebody. We don't need to make every day sparkle. It's totally all right. It's enough to have coffee and chat. It's enough. It's enough. We can be our same old selves. I am totally in love with this reverb. We can the be Valhalla. Same old selves. I just flow nowhere to go. And because it's on the bus, it's set to 100% in the mix, and then I have control over it, how much of it I want on my Vox channel over here. So, yeah, same old selves. There we go. Set L. How many have we gone to? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is song number six. No, I also played um, Anyway, I'm Down, so that's seven. <laughs> that was the only one I wrote without words that day, and uh, I'm sort of surprised. I thought that maybe I'd, like, sort of just make make interesting beats that I would do words later, um, which would have been a perfectly legitimate thing to do, but um, I don't know. I, wanted, I guess I wanted to work the lyric writing muscle a little bit. I feel like I hadn't in a while and it's easy to get stymied with lyric writing because it feels like oh my god everything is cliche and it's been done before and i ah, can't do this but then just do it anyway oh that that's the motto for the year is fuck it let's do it anyway um i know kianra is, is adopting that one i'm adopting that one feel free to adopt that <laughs> for yourself fuck it i'm doing it anyway <laughs> uh as as a way to move forward with your creative endeavors, whatever they may be. All right, so let me close this one. And what else can I play for you? Oh, I, I, had, I had one called um, Why Would Anybody Want That? Which is talking about stymied lyrics. I really did not know what to write, except this was a prompt in Oblique Strategies where it was like something like, uh nobody wants that or something like yeah what 
<laughs> what is it that nobody wants? Something like that. And then, so I started just going with the rhythm of the words. Like, why would anybody want that? I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool and rhythmic. And maybe I can just do like a repeated thing. So, yes. Thank you, Sam June. Your music, smooth tunes. Yeah, I'm into the smooth. <laughs> I'm into the smooth. I'm into the smooth these days. I'm into the relaxing. So anyway, but this one, it's like, it's got some potential to be interesting. I think it needs a little bit more lyric than this, but here we go. This is called, <laughs> why would anybody want that? There's no, where's my lyrics? They do exist. Uh, I do like this groove. Hmm. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I did have some technical difficulties. That was something that didn't work out that great um, while I was recording. Uh, gosh. Hmm. Okay odd well tell you what i will just um i will play it the the bounce that i did how odd okay all right um yeah we'll just play the bounce I'm glad you like that motto, Sam. Yes. <laughs> Fuck it, we're doing it anyway. I like I want that on a mug. <laughs> on a shirt. Why would anybody want that? section <laughs> sort of like a reggae starting over anyway that's that and yeah it's groovy right <laughs> so I don't know maybe it just uh, needs no words at all um, or to expand on what is it that no but nobody would want and why like I think that's part of what stumped me is like I really like the rhythm of the words but I couldn't <laughs> think of how to expand on this like why would anybody why would anybody want that uh so maybe it'll come to me one day i'll like have the boss work on it kind of situation subconscious go um yeah aren't the keys cool i love those those are this uh electric p p o n o the beautiful oh oh this one is not the um the cakewalk one wait no i didn't use that though Jeez, what happened to this file my god this one is the cakewalk one yeah so dope so dope really nice <clears throat> it's like it's a vintage sound but i feel like it's never gets old never gets old it's so cool Maybe it's fate that I didn't fa save this with the vocal. <laughs> I mean, like, I know that the vocal's, like, in there in my project files here. By the way, here, if you ever <clears throat> have run into this situation, you, 
can go to your project audio folder and then um, have it has all the list of things that I here we go like I did a bunch <clears throat> I did a bunch for why would anybody want that uh, and they're all This is another reason why it's really good to label your tracks because why would anybody want it's sh that? it's showing me that I recorded that in my B2 why would Pro want that? track. <clears throat> anyway, but I, it would have been nice if I had why labeled it like want that? B2 Pro Harmony, B2 Pro Lead, like this kind of thing. It matter labeling your tracks matters for later. Yep. Anyway, what do I have muted? Great question. Great question. That's like top of the list of what's wrong. Is it muted? <laughs> Is it on? <laughs> Is it plugged in the right hole? <laughs> I have the rain muted. Decided it need, didn't need to be rainy. It's odd. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Lyrics. Why would anybody want that? <laughs> uh, well, we tried, Jamie. We tried. Uh, it was just the rain, though. It's just, it's just the rain and the wind. Um, drum samples. What am I using for drums? Uh, ah, I'm using Citala and this lo-fi kit that I curated myself. So of all my piles and thousands of samples <laughs> these were sounds that i thought were really nice for a lo-fi kit which I, i've saved um so i'm still tweaking it but it's pretty good i feel like i've got a nice kick and a snare a little hat a little <clears throat> like match sticky type sound um a cool kick with like a crackle in it this side stick reverb side stick ugh, love so good can't get enough of that sound uh, that i never use i'll probably replace it <coughs> that's a nice little like snappy sort of thing um i've used that a little bit it's very much like an 8080 sound uh these like reverby knocks and clucks and snaps and stuff are so fun but yeah this was a and I love this, this rim is so nice. Like between this rim and this side stick, it's like, ugh, everything. Yeah, <clears throat> it's true. There is not enough cowbell uh, <laughs> in any of these. <laughs> Don St. John, hi, nice to see you. It's been a minute. Yeah. Um, oh, good. Hey, all right, Sam Junior Music. I'm so glad it could be helpful to see your project folder that way. Yeah, when things disappear on you or like, cakewalk crashes and this happened during my time with um and don uh, don i will get to the the strings thing it's very cool and i'm excited to tell you about it um but yeah when when cakewalk crashes as it sometimes does but let's face it every program crashes once in a while and say so you recorded a bunch of stuff like it's still there cakewalk still got you it's in your project audio folder so you can get to it and just it yeah, save yourself the trouble of like or the time and the trouble of when you have your tracks labeled, it, it'll just make it easier to find. So I was working really fast and just hoping things wouldn't crash, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, Don, uh, this string sound is the Mellotron. It's the Mellotron and it's so cool. This is the cello sound. Uh, I love how like perfect it like it doesn't it sounds like a I mean it's a Mellotron so it's it's recorded to a piece of tape and then that tape is played via different keys and it's just so it's real but the transitions give it away as being this sort of like oh that's odd <laughs> so Rather than like trying to be a real cello, it sounds like a real cello, but 
um, gl glitchy, and I love that about it. Yeah, it's such such a cool sound. And then I have it side chained because <laughs> you gotta side chain everything. Yeah. And it, that was just like a one, two, three, four, four note groove. Um, that I just really I liked. Thought would be make make a great bass line. And then like with the with the keys. Ugh, so cool. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's that one. And I'm a bit bewildered as to why half of it's like missing. Uh, cause I my like. The one thing, and if you know where this is, like, so I wrote, <clears throat> I wrote other MIDI for it. I wrote other, uh, another drum section for it that like kind of like reggae beat for this B part, but it's gone. So unlike the audio that I recorded and it, it's here, lives here in the project audio folder, like there's not that for MIDI, I don't think. Like, let's, let's look. No, these are all things that come with Cakewalk. Um, that, that's pretty cool, but yeah, I'll have to rewrite that if I want that groove back, which is fine. It's not that hard and stuff, but yeah. Um, yeah, it does, <laughs> does this really need my, all right, here's my opportunity to like put cowbell in this little song, but I don't know. Why would anybody want that? Like, you both want it, so. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's why. Why would anybody want that? And let's see where are we at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's our eighth out of eleven. All right, let's. Um, we will close this and move on. I, think I will. I tweaked the something. Anyway. <coughs> uh. Uh, oh, and we listen to same old selves, and we listen. Oh, okay, uh, 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 you'll like this one, and I want you to guess what microphone I'm using in this one. Uh, it's called "Open Your Heart." <laughs> this is another one. Where, like, not afraid to be cheesy. I mean, like, part of me is de definitely afraid of being cheesy, horribly afraid of being cheesy. But then again, like, that's just gonna stop me. It's just going to stop me from making something. So I don't want that. Just just carry on. Be cheesy. Cheese is delicious. We all like cheese. All right. And this is. Uh, OK. <clears throat> Yes, all right, here we go. Open your heart. Open your heart to me. Open your heart to me. Can't you? Open your arms to me. Open your arms. Yeah, there's like no bass in this. How funny. I want to develop this. Can't you see? I am waiting for you.
this is, is fun. I, of course, used my my telephone microphone that that makes everything sound like intimate and wonderful. <laughs> it just picks up exactly the right frequencies to make things sound really dope. So um, that's been that's been the the not so secret weapon on a couple of these. Anyway. <laughs> uh yeah and this one again really like vibey and cool this one uh the loop i believe came from when i downloaded mpc beats which is a free daw slash virtual instrument and it comes with um a vast collection of really wonderful samples but MPC Beats makes it sort of hard for you to get to on your computer. It sort of hides them in secret folders. So what I had to do is like get the name and they all have ridiculous names. Like this is lo-fi hyphen loop hyphen music hyphen LS space ML two. Like I had to take this name and then have my computer search for that. And it finally, <laughs> it was grinding through everything to find that <laughs> and then it showed me that ah, it's in this hidden secret folder so i recommend i recommend yes others have a whole effects chain for the telephone effect exactly and i i support that also i mean i just love i love uh that effect in a lot of ways it does it does so many things to our brains that uh i just love that the developers of the telephone developers inventors the people who were the engineers working on the audio engineers working on the first telephones they wanted to find the frequencies that are most picked up by the human voice at, or, you know the the frequencies that are most important in the human voice so that you could be understood really really clearly no matter what was happening around so the frequencies that they're boosting are always going to be the perfect frequencies for making something pop up pop out of a mix and uh yeah so it just, it just makes everything sound so good uh even if i add like if i use my nice like clear zabel condenser mic and then with a layer of the telephone mic under it it's really it's nice i should do that more often anyway uh this was fun and this yeah so this loop was a free loop that got through mpc beats and they have a lot of nice um, lo-fi stuff. I went through a lot of their stuff in a, a couple of live streams back when I was making beats in bulk and using some of their loops, which I would then like strip away and then Claire would write, Claire would come and, uh, write something new over it, which is a fun way to work. So that is open your heart. I think it's pretty cool. I, I'm again, like Alla recliner and I might do like Claire and I might do something with this because it, I feel like it fits in with that kind of like vibey chill thing. It's like maybe a little too trap trappity trap with the, the hi hats, but I don't know. It's still vibey anyway. <laughs> All right. So that was number nine. Uh, yeah, I did two really with the with the telephone. The first one, very first one on this live stream, which was All Things Connect, which I really like, and I'll do something with. Um, and Open Your Heart. I don't think I used it on other things, but I should have, because it sounds so good. Oh no, I take it back. Um, this next one is also featuring the telephone. <laughs> And this one very much feels like, like me with like a, a touch. Of, I don't know. There's like a touch of like a weird owl voice in it. And I really like that. <laughs> it's called always with you. Uh, it's like a little affected. Who, and I can't remember exactly who it reminds me of besides weird owl. I'd be curious to know who it reminds you of as we're listening along. Andre, you're saying, I think I have an impulse response from a phone. I really have to take a look. Impulse response? Is that like a frequency chart? Uh, what do you mean? That's interesting. Yeah, but yeah, cell phone, that cell phone designers do that. 
uh, where same thing as back in the olden days of telephones, uh, where they they want to boost the frequencies that are most uh, easily understood formants in in the human voice, the most um, prominent prominent ones. Okay, this song is pretty cool too, and uh, again I use this. Um, the this upright piano as an arpeggiated uh, piano and it's so fun and just like slightly chaotic and I just I like elements of randomness when I'm composing I think it's really inspiring to hear like what a quantizer can do and what a sequencer can do and just like brings the sound in this whole to a whole new dimension a whole nother level um so we'll have a listen to always with you send mellotron again and this is the 808 kit that comes with Sakala. Mellotron and this is the God on the ceiling preset that it came with which is just so cool it's <laughs> so cool just listen to like just by itself it's amazing I just had endless fun endless fun with this uh, instrument so fun. I'm always with you. Like I would like to tune that vocal a little bit, but it's there's something charming about it. And this bass. <laughs> this is a new instrument I got. Whatever you uh, This is from Electronic Sound Lab, makers of my beloved creepy piano. Uh, they made another great instrument, and I set it up to the ar arpeggiator as well. I'm all about the Mellotron. And this delay that I'm using all over the place on, on, um, dang near all of these is my favorite delay, the sonatist delay. Um, and I, I think I tweaked it. So it's the quarter ping pong setting, um, preset was over here, I believe. Quarter ping pong, quarter ping pong. Are you here? Did I make this thing up? Well, anyway, um, and I have it set to tempo sync to the host. That's the most important thing with this with this delay is that it's synced up to the tempo perfectly. Yeah, so that's always with you. <laughs> I'm just like super, super charmed by the Mellotron. What did I say? It's like 
warm and weird and intimate, warm and weird. <laughs> and that's how I want my life. <laughs> I'm writing that down. <laughs> uh, all right. So that was number 10. Always with you. So the last tune and um, this is a perfect one to end on. It's a lullaby. And it's called Sleep Now, My Dear. Okay, wait. Im okay, Andre, you're saying impulse response is a kind of digital fingerprint, for example, from a loudspeaker commonly used for guitar cabinets. Okay, so is that like... Um, hmm. Yeah, if, if it's the same as like a frequency response chart, then I think I, I'm familiar. But yeah, well, it seems like it's worth looking at, definitely, for sure, when, <coughs> like as a, as a guide to EQing. I did a video a while back, and I think you were here for this, where I made a bus where it's like the shitty speaker bus that I EQ'd it in such a way that lined up with how cell phone speakers are the frequency response chart of a cell phone speaker roughly so that I could run the mix through that one bus to kind of see how it would translate. Um, yeah, I didn't get very far with that, but the idea is there kind of. Okay. Sleep now, my dear. I wrote this song very much with my, my husband in mind. He said he's been having trouble sleeping lately. He's on the road. So, um, I wrote him a lullaby and also myself a lullaby because like I'm an overworker and I'm a yeah just put, put pusher of myself too hard er and this was also for me to just like calm down just chill out we've done enough today and that's kind of the key key phrase you've done enough today so this one I'll play for you it's called sleep now my dear oh no okay this is another one where I had issues so I'm gonna play you and I had to like pull in the uh, yeah okay it's okay this is, this is still gonna be great I'm gonna play this for you but uh, I'm gonna play it from this recording but yeah, I do, and I, I do want to develop this one. Sleep now, my dear, and rest your tired eyes. Sweetest of dreams awaits you. Empty your mind and allow yourself to settle down. Done enough today. Sleep now, my dear, and rest your tired eyes. Sweetest of dreams awaits you. Empty your mind and allow yourself to settle down. writing a lullaby but round <clears throat> also yeah so I want to develop that my friend Anna is in town uh, and I think she and Claire and I are gonna m 
do a version of this where we're singing it as a round all together. I think it'll be really beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Audrey. <laughs> it's sweet. But yeah, I need to tell myself this a lot of like, you've done enough today. Just, just empty your mind, allow yourself to settle down. You've done enough today. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you all for being here. This is really, really fun for me to look through these, and um, I hope it was inspiring and helpful to you, too. Again, this whole exercise of doing the 20-song game came from this book, The Frustrated Songwriter's Handbook um, by... Who is it? Can you see that? There we go. Um, by... Carl Coriat and Nicholas Dobson. And uh, I'm looking forward to reading more of this. I only, I only read um, a couple pages of it because it came after Saturday. Um, but it looks awesome. And it's very much in line with the just like, just do the work. Just do the work and stop se the self-criticism that stops you from making the art. Don't let anything stop you from making the art. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, until next week, I hope that you have a really lovely whatever time of day it is for you. And, um, yeah, I'm like, Andre, seems like it's going to be sleepy time for you. And it's great. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe one day I will release these um, when, they, when I tweak them a little bit. And make a little little EP, like a little lo-fi produce-style EP. Because I usually, I, I just make these Baroque kind of uh, arrangements of everything. By the way, uh, the Eugene Ruff Wagner album is pre-sale day is tomorrow um, for the EP. And that's going to be hitting, I believe, February 2nd. As those songs that it, we've been working on for like since August <laughs> is finally coming out. And I'm really proud of them. And... Uh, they they are going to be a, a good offering to the robot overlords for the eventual takeover when they reach enlightenment so it's an important album and uh you would do well to pre-save it and stream it as a precaution to appease our ro robot overlords they they will enjoy it and i hope you will too all right folks Thank you so much for hanging out and have a beautiful evening. Sleep now, 